as you ramble on through life, brother, whatever be your goal, keep your eye upon the donut and not upon the hole. That's an axiom uh, originally called the Optimist Creed. The author, at least I couldn't discover where it came from. Uh, a donut company back in the 30s used it. But I think it applies to the topic I want to talk about today. And that is focus. And this video is really geared towards people that are homesteading, they are prepping, they are, you know, getting ready for what might not be good things, but really it's focus. I'm going to say the jingle again. As you travel on, or I'm, let, me try, let me try that again. As you ramble on through life, brother, whatever be your goal, keep your eye upon the donut and not upon the hole. And hello. This is Canteen Cup, and my name is Scott. I'm glad to have you with us. Uh, this is the first time I've seen sun all day. It's been cloudy. We're supposed to get a lot of rain, um, which is good. My cover crop is starting to grow. I'm looking out at my field, which is behind me, and I'm seeing little teeny tiny green leaves, but that's good news. But I want to talk again. I want to talk about focus. And in today's world, which is very different from when I was younger, in today's world, there are a lot of distractions. There is the internet, there's all these news medias, there's all these divergent and convergent theories and things going on and people calling each other names. And, you know, we talk about the COVID-19 pandemic, this drug works, this drug doesn't work. Uh, this is good. This is bad. We're all going to live. We're all going to die. Um, you know, in the grand scheme of things, in your little microcosm, does that really matter to you? What all these other people are saying. And the reason why I bring this up is because if you spend all your time worrying about all this other stuff, then you're not concentrating on your stuff. And I think that's important for you to realize that, that you need to focus on what's important to you or for you and for your family. And I will give you what's important to me and it may or may not apply to what's important to you, but use this, if you can't use my my direct model, the one I use, adapt it to your model. So, what's important to me? Now, before I get into that, I want to discuss a little bit about a theory called root cause analysis. Um, for many years, I worked in the trades. I was a mechanic of various sorts. I was an electrician of various sorts. I worked on a large range of equipment. And so I had to develop troubleshooting skills. And one of those troubleshooting skills was root cause analysis. It's being able to follow the problem back to what is actually causing the problem. And it's not always the first thing you see. And so using root cause analysis, in other words, going take using that technique and applying it to what is most important to me and what may be very important to you, but what's most important to me are basically four things. And they are, do I have enough food? Do I have enough water? Can I maintain sanitary conditions? And can I defend my family? Those four things are what drives me to do the things I do. Now, you can branch off from that, but when we are talking about what am I doing to prepare for bad times, it's those four things. I mean, do I have other hobbies? Do I do other things? Yes, I do. But when I'm on my preparedness side of the house, when I'm doing things to get my family ready for bad things happening, which, you know, some of it kind of happened right now during the lockdowns in the spring. 
and people are predicting it's going to happen happen again in the fall. So I'm preparing for that, and I look at those four things. Do I have enough food? Now, and I'll give you an example. Uh, we bought another freezer, so we now have two freezers, and we're going to fill that second one with meat. We have, we're going to get a cow or a half a cow, and we're going to get a pig, and we're going to have them slaughtered and butchered and we're going to put the meat away in the freezer so that we have food in case again in the fall this happens again and we can't leave our homes so that's important now we're doing other things but for the sake of this video i'm just giving you one example do i have enough water and that's a you know that's a very multiple kind of um, answer to that because everybody has their own things now I have county water and it's very good since we've been here we haven't had we've had a couple outages due to the main breaks but they fix them in a couple hours and so we have water on top of that I store water and I store enough to last us a while and is it is it a hundred percent potable probably it is but if I was going to use it for drinking, you know, direct drinking, I would probably filter it a little more or boil it or whatever. But in general, it's usable as is. And I have a sufficient supply of that. So I keep water. In addition, I live in an area with lots of streams, creeks, and rivers. And so if I have to go get water, I can get water. I have an intermittent stream on the back of my property, which right now is probably running. Uh, if that fails, I can go back some more to my neighbors who has a flowing stream in his creek. His creek is flowing, and I can get water from there. Uh, right now, I'd have to do it with buckets, you know, buckets into a into a tote or a, or a barrel. But uh, one of our near future plans, or medium future plans, is we're going to buy a water pump, maybe a small one that we can use to pump the water and do it quicker. So. Once we get that pump, then I can probably just go alongside a, you know, public road where there's a creek, drop a hose over in about two minutes, get all the water I need or all the water I can carry. Uh, moving along, can I maintain sanitary conditions? The answer is yes. I live on a septic system, and so really the only thing I need to maintain sanitary conditions is water. Now, that water I talked about that we'll say is semi-potable, well, that's really great for flushing toilets. And when I had my house outfitted, I put low-volume toilets in all the bathrooms. And, and I think um, it's a two-valve it's a, it's a two thing, whereas if you are just you know, flushing liquids, we'll just call it that, you hit one button, it drops maybe about a gallon of water, and then if you are going for solids, it uses 1.6 gallons. And it's a very efficient toilet. I've been very happy with them, which is a lot different than the three-gallon toilets and is a lot different than the five-gallon toilets. So it does do a good, a good job in conserving the water. So I, so I maintain sanitary conditions. And because I also have water on the property, we have a means now to keep ourselves clean, which is very important. And then moving along to our, our fourth, fourth category, can we defend our family? And right now the answer is yes. We have, in past videos, I talked about upping our security a little bit. We continue to look at that and try to develop the right posture for the times at hand. Will we always remain at our current posture? Maybe yes, maybe no. But the idea is that we are constantly evaluating what is going on around us, and then we are proactively reacting to it. In other words, I'm not waiting until the bad people are on my property. I'm doing things now to help us to be, to, to be sure that we are ready in case bad guys do show up on our property. Um, where we live is not not necessarily the area for roving gangs because there's just not there's just not enough out here to support a roving gang so we don't worry about that we do worry about 
you know, some some occasional stuff or some transient stuff, and we prepare as much as we can for the unexpected. So that's in a brief of how I look at life. Now, all this other stuff, the news, I mean, um, I used to work as an analyst for the federal government, and... Part of my job was researching things and then developing executive briefs and white papers, often in a very short amount of time. And I used to be able to fairly quickly determine if an article or if um, a video or, or a Wikipedia thing was true or not. And there's a video on my YouTube site called um, Information Reliability, and you can see that. I think it's 10 or 15 minutes. And it talks about some of the methods I used to determine if something is, is fairly reliable as far as being truthful. But looking at the stuff today, most of the stuff out there is not really good. I don't know what's happened to journalism, but it's not journalism anymore. When you have two news sources reporting on the same thing and saying the opposite things, something's wrong. You know, when I was much younger, you would have two news groups reporting on the same thing. You know, one would have a bias certain way, another would have a bias another way. But inside both those articles, there was elements of truth. And you could sit there and pull out the truth and say, well, yeah, this guy, you know, this news source is, is left, left wing or liberal oriented. So I get that. This one is right, right wing. And here's their bias. But the gist of the article or whatever it is they're talking about was truthful. Today, that's not so. I mean, I see stuff all over the place. And frankly, if you don't have the time to spare, don't waste your time on that stuff. Worry about what's important to you, where you stand and where your family lives. Develop the process of how to determine what root cause analysis is, take it down to that level and use it. You know, the question is, what do I need to survive? You know, what do I need to thrive? What do I need to live? Well, I need food. I need water. I need, I need to keep myself clean. I need to defend my family. And then take it from there. Does that branch out and get bigger? Yeah, because, you know, you want to have a garden and you got to get the seeds and then you have to get the the implements and then you have to get the fertilizer and all I understand that but when you start off with your basic needs like I said when I use my four whenever I go to buy something or whenever I want something I see how it applies to one of those four things and if it, if it applies then I consider buying it if it doesn't then I don't and don't get me wrong I do have hobbies, so to speak. I do have frivolous things that I do, but when it gets down to the, the basic necessities of living, you know, I, I usually try to put it in one of those four categories. And like a lot of folks, I do have my, my addictions. Mine is uh, typically pocket knives and then sometimes axes and I'm starting to get the flashlight thing going on, but you know, um, I can, I can at least rationalize those into a category. <laughs> but that's a little bit different. That's something for fun. But if you only have $10 and that whole $10 is, can, should only be applied to whatever, you're, whatever you need to live or survive, then you shouldn't be spending that $10 on something frivolous. Okay, don't buy that video game. Don't, you know, get subscribed to some channel don't buy a dvd whatever buy buy the food get the water taken care of you know whatever whatever your root cause is but it's being able to sit there and say hey i've got ten dollars maybe i should buy food or hey i've got ten extra dollars i could go buy something for fun you kind of see the difference so that's it for today when you're concentrating when you're looking at things Keep your eye on that donut because you can eat that donut. And don't keep your eye on that hole because you can't eat that hole. Unless it's a Dunkin' Donuts, you know. <laughs> but, but you get the point. 
Keep your focus on what's important. Don't worry about the stuff that you cannot change. And really most of that stuff out there is not going to change you either. So just worry about what's happening in your little microcosm of the world and keep yourself safe. Keep yourself secure. That's all I got for you. We'll see you out there.